So I'm wearing really chunky earrings. So I've taken one of my AirPods out. Can you hear me? Testing. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome in. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Someone just tell me if you can hear me. Because I've only got one AirPod in. Yeah. Thanks, 72 nonsense. Thanks. Okay, so I can start now. Um, I know, Liam, the hair. It's still me, guys. Don't panic. I have just straightened my hair and put some curling in it. If anyone saw my story earlier, there was a bit of a moment, but I'm over it now. I'm also over being in lockdown. Um, in the UK, we've got, we're in like the second week or whatever. Um, and Mondays are always, always just a bit little for me. Um, it's difficult because, you know, you wake up and you're like, oh, another week of no job and no focus. And it doesn't normally get good until about eight o'clock, which is now. And that technically means the day's over, which it means it's nearly tomorrow, Tuesday. So that's okay. Um, you know, sometimes it's just hard to make it happen, isn't it? And normally it's okay, but, oh, here we are. Um, updates on my week. I've been watching The Queen's Gambit. Anyone been using, using? Watching The Queen's Gambit. I'm now, um, obsessed with chess. Who knew? Uh, to the point where I've been trying to play with Jamie as much as I can, and I've beaten him twice. Um, we, we've played a lot more than twice, but still, um, one time I didn't realise it was checkmate, he had to tell me, so I don't think it's going that well, but you know, we do what we can, thank God we've got artists and the, and the arts to entertain us, eh? Tonight's drink, I've got a Jameson's and ginger ale and lime from Jamie because he wanted to drag me out of my bad mood. It is working. So, thank you for being here. Everyone's in. Everyone's here. The uh, the response for tonight's show has been crazy. Um, I'm so glad that you're here for an hour of entertainment and escapism and to see me talk to my guest, who I just needed to kind of refresh my memory on why everyone was losing their minds. Um, like why everyone was so excited for me to speak to him and uh so I've watched a bit of series five and six of skins to kind of catch up with that um and he also valiantly stepped into the breach because I thought I was going to have to cancel this week's episode but I haven't so that's good I've just seen he's here so uh always be nice in my house I take no prisoners if you're a dick I will block you um we will try and answer questions that are coming through on screen, but I have taken the time to prepare this interview. So um, some of your questions will be like, will be part of that interview. If we do get time at the end, we will, um, we will answer some questions that come in. So everyone, I have the great pleasure of introducing my guest tonight, Alexander Arnold. Ugh. Monday, see? Alexander Arnold. Alex made his professional acting debut as the much-loved metalhead Rich Hardbeck in Generation 3 of E4's hit series, Skins. Since leaving the show, Alex's career has been both enviably successful and wonderfully varied. His theatre credits include Shopping and Fucking at the Lyric Hammersmith, directed by Sean Holmes, and Bitter Wheat at the Garrick, directed by David Mamet. Television credits include Jamie in ITV's A Mother's Son, Jim Carter in Poldark, and Luke in Lenny James' Save Me. Together with multiple short films, Alex has appeared in features like David Brent, Life on the Road, Danny Boyle's Yesterday, written by Richard Curtis, and this year saw the release of his war drama, The Outpost, in which he stars alongside Scott Eastwood and Orlando Bloom. His upcoming projects, by the way, include Creation Stories, the tale of Creation Records label, label head Alan McGee, and also stars... Uh, are you Michelle from Skins alumni, Thomas Turgoose? So, I'm going to add him in. Please welcome everyone. Good. Any second now. Hey. 
Hi. Hi. We, we made it. Sorry, I went on a bit of a ramble there. I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't mean to, but I'm just, I'm having a bit of a shit day. No, it's a really lovely introduction. Thank you. Okay, Great. good, good. Thanks, thanks. Um, <laughs> welcome, welcome. How are you? How's your Monday? How was my Monday? It's been raining quite a lot, so I've been indoors pretty much all day. Um, Fun. But yeah, you know, it's... Uh, what are the other options? Are there other uh, options other than being indoors? Not a lot, really. Not a lot. Get I your mean, steps I, I up. Actually, yeah, I did go for a run, actually, this morning. Sounds quite good. It's got my exercise, you know. Nice. That we're allowed. Um, good. So that was good. Yeah, but um, it's quite nice being cosy in, in inside, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. Okay, good. Good. So I found you in a relatively good mood, whereas you found yeah. me in an absolutely ca catastrophic mood. Oh, hence, no, I... hence the uh, the whiskey. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I should have got a whiskey. I do have whiskey. I just had a cup of tea. So... Rock on. Rock on. That's right. It's Monday. It is Monday after all. That's true. Not That's today. true. I do. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's uh, let's ask you the first question, which is traditional, and it's um, Alex. Can I call you Alex? Yeah, yeah, Alexander's a bit too much, isn't it? I know, but I kind of, I didn't know it was like Alexander Armstrong. You could never call him just Alex, right? Really? Well, well I don't know. No, Alex, Alex it's, uh, it's actually Sir Alex. Is, uh, my, uh, so, Sir Alex. Alex. <laughs> um, great. Are you... Alex is fine, thank you. <laughs> Are you rich from skins? I am rich from skins, or I was, I did play rich from skins, yeah. Okay, good. So, so this is uh, on this show. I talk to people who might be recognised or um, might have a similar experience that I have, which was being recognised for something other than being myself, and for a very specific time in my life. Um, and so, I've got a question from ugly underscore rat underscore boy with an I and a zero. It's an interesting username. Really interesting. Um, do you like heavy metal in real life? Um, some metal music I like. When I when I first uh, got the part, I wasn't really. I had friends who were like really into metal. But I wasn't really. I was a bit of a music snob, which I think was what was my similarity to Rich. Really. Um, yeah. You know, I was quite into like indie rock, and um, you know, I think that sort of transferred over a bit. But no, I mean, I like, I like, um, like some like prog, because obviously there's so many different like genres of metal, you know, like there's like the old kind of, you know, thrash metal bands like Megadeth and people like that, I which mean, are great. I'm like, yes, yes, as say. if I know. Um, <laughs> I love that. I mean, I, I really asked that question with a full sense of irony, but I love, I love how seriously you're taking the answer. I love it. It's really good. <laughs> I try to take it seriously. Um, just to know as much as I could at the time. Totally. And also, I feel like you were, you kind of embodied the identity of a, of a, a huge community at the time. Like it was a yeah. lot for, for metalheads yeah. and for people to I be represented. Quite... Sorry, yeah, I think, no, I think it's quite, I think it's quite a thing in Bristol as well. There was a lot of like venues that were like metal venues, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. Cause, um... And across the board, like you say, lots of different genres. There were little pockets of venues all over the city that yeah. had very specific musical kind of backgrounds i guess yeah 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 exactly just uh, i mean bristol is so like vibrant with like nightlife just we'll get on to bristol in a bit yeah. um chrissy <laughs> morty said do you do you ever feel like people expect you to be like rich and i i'm you i'm putting those two questions together because i'm sort of saying like you know do they expect you to be metal um I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. Yes, sometimes. Um, well, the, 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 it's more kind of like a, whenever you, if you recognise someone, it's kind of like, oh, it's, it's you, sort of thing. It's, I guess they expect me to be like, a little bit like the character, I guess. I looked quite, obviously I looked quite, um, just going to move that a bit, sorry. Um, I look, obviously looked quite, quite different, um, you know, in the show. Initially, I mean, I had really long, I had like a wig on, um, you know, and I had, uh, sorry, my camera. Stop really spoiling my questions, weird. we're getting to that. Um, had like a... <laughs> um, but yeah, I, looked, I mean, that, that, was, that was what was quite funny because I looked quite different, obviously. And like, um, I remember when the first half of, um, 
um, you know, it was, it's weird because um, maybe I was with like Will or with Dakota and other people and people would instantly recognize them, but then they'd be like, oh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't recognize me. I did, and that was great. It was great. So I had a bit of a, you know, I was a bit anonymous really. Um, I was, ta yes. I was the one taking a photo, you know, I was like, oh, I'll take a photo. You know. Oh my God, I didn't uh, notice that. <laughs> Sometimes, Amazing. You know, people who watch the show be like, actually, you, you were in it, weren't you? You saw it, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> Burn. Oh, no. I <laughs> no, love the fact that people nice are genuinely happened. shocked. People are like, oh, my God, it was a wig. Yeah. Well, it was like real, it was real hair. Um, wow. Did that mean you have to have, a, like, did you have a really long call time in the morning? Yeah, I think I had a bit of an early, earlier call time. Oh, wow. I mean, I can relate. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> It didn't take that, that long, really, I don't think. I don't know. Okay. Um, but it, but I think it once you get, like, you, once you get the hang of it, you, like, the whole team are just like, bang, wig on, off we go. Yeah, yeah. Wig on, let's nice. do it. It was weird because I did, it. Cause it did make you, like, embody the character quite a bit. Because I remember, like, a lot of people were saying to me, you're so, like, moody, like, just walking around on set. I mean, I did take it quite seriously, like, nice. my first role and you know, thing. But... Just generally, like your attitude would change because you've got you've got really long hair, got no, like your peripheral vision is quite you know limited, and like yes. had like big boots on and like chains and so that physicalness was quite was really helpful for the character. Yeah, I bet. Um, but and I'd sort of play not play up to it, but sort of you know get into that more because it was you know and that added to the character of this. So yeah, well, I when you're getting it, the reaction from somebody that's exactly what you're, you don't even have to do any acting. People are just like, oh, cheer up. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're done. That's it, you know, don't act. Go home. Yeah. Um, okay, so take me back to before Skins, before it was, uh, before it was Rich Hardbeck. Um, was it always acting that you've been motivated by and did you always want to make a career out of it? Um, yeah, I think I always wanted to be an actor. Well, not always wanted to be an actor. I started in a, in a play at school when I was 11. Um, Alice Through the Looking Glass had played The White Knight. It sounds like a, it doesn't sound wow. like a play, does it? It's like a sort mm. of a version of Alice in One. Anyway, somehow we can get the right. Is it just the sequel? It's the sequel of Alice in One, isn't it? Yeah. But we could that knockoff. We could have just done, you know, Alice in Wonderland. But it was Alice right. The, the proper. You know, yeah. Um, I remember doing that and that was, yeah, that was, um, yeah, I got to really actually um, do something that I loved and sort of discovered it more. So that was, that was gave really, me the bug. gave me the bug, as they say. Um, but then I remember, yeah, I remember I went to, obviously went to a different school in year, in year seven, so when I was 12, um, and I then got a part in like Oliver Twist as someone who, he's like the pub landlord or something like that. I didn't get part of the Art Arthur Dodger or Oliver or anything like that. Nice. Um, got a part of the, somebody sort of calls in um, Nancy when she does the Um Papa song. Yeah, yeah. So I got to introduce Nancy, that was pretty fun. Nice. And then I also played a, a night watchman or something with a big hat. My dad actually made me like a really, you know, like those old policeman hats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my friend that. Tori's dad makes us all like we used to go out on nights out and it would always be Tori's dad that would make us like a flamingo nose no beak like why would we go out dressed as flamingos but hey he was crafty yeah, love a crafty good. dad yeah yeah it's good it's good to have a crafty dad my dad's always been really good at like, making things and stuff and Nice. So, yeah. He made, he made me like a sword once. I think that was probably, that probably sort of played a part into my acting career a lot. Had, had the props, you know, necessary to sort of sure. gear me into wanting to be an actor. Sure. Uh, like a props Always the swordsman. Not, not making a sword from... Right. Blade. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Um, and so, no, I was just going to say, oh, I think we've clashed a bit. Sorry, no, sorry, yeah. go ahead. sorry, I was rambling, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was just going to say, um, when, <laughs> so when the opportunity came up to audition for Skins, like, the, I was talking to Dakota about this as well, because obviously for us, um, we had no idea what it was. 
Whereas for you, duration, yeah. you knew what you were getting in for. Um, and so Zoe E E K K has asked, how was your audition process different to mine? And I suppose like the number one thing was, I didn't know what Skins was. So I was just auditioning for a thing that was like, maybe going to be on telly. T tell me about like, I guess going from school plays to auditioning for one of the biggest shows on telly at the time. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, you know we we like me and my friends were all so fond of Skins. Skins was like such a unique show when it came out, and such a yeah, a totally different kind of drama for mm -hmm. people, you know, uh, young adults, uh, teenagers. But yeah, the process, I mean, was, um, um, yeah, going in, I mean, knowing that, having that in mind, I guess, there was, um, I guess the, the, uh, sorry, this isn't, I'm not actually talking about the audition now, I mean, just the actual process of actually having the part and knowing, like, that you guys have gone before was quite like, um, just hoping that we'd live up, up to you guys, you know, um, that was, that was the main thing, I guess, in, in with that in mind. But yeah, I mean, the process was, it's quite a lot, it's quite a drawn out process, really. I mean, I auditioned in London. Were you in Bristol? Yeah, the, I mean, Jane Ripley, who cast our series, um, yeah. literally came to my school. Oh, oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Yeah, she's lovely, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I owe so much to Jane Ripley. Of course. Of yeah. course, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, was, she, she yeah. didn't, she, we didn't obviously have like open auditions or anything. Was there like a big queue of people? I mean, was, were you the only yeah. one there? Like how? It was a re yeah, it was like sort of X Factor style, like queuing in like a zigzag. No uh, way. Yeah, school in Camden. And, wow. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, and then we sort of went into groups of 20 and then there was like, we all put into groups of four five and then did like a little bit of improvisation and stuff and uh i've just been given a whiskey now as well so that's quite good yeah. wow what a mm. keeper mm. but yeah um, it was... thank you that was rachel my, my girlfriend thank you oh hi hi, hi um, rachel well done <laughs> um, cheers then cheers yeah sorry a bit late in the, in the day it's all right it's all right welcome the, welcome the to the show <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, it was, yes, yeah, so it was, a little, I, th I think it was about sort of eight or nine auditions later that we sort of um, formed Wow. different um, people coming together. Funny enough, interesting fact, I don't know if this has ever been said actually, but I think Will, like Will was going up for, we, me and Will, me and Will Merrick, who played Allo, like my best friend in the show, were, um, were going up for Rich, like both going up for Rich um, until really kind of the second to last audition or something. And they, they saw that we worked really well together and I think that's when they cast him as Aloe. So we were quite, um, we, we were, you know, going up for the same role right until... So until when you were put into groups, was he in your group? Uh, no, sorry, this was like, this was like right early on. So like the groups of 20, groups of four, right at the beginning. So that's when I went with my friends um, from, from oh. school. Oh, and then okay. from that we had like big calls and calls. Yeah, when we initially, then we, when we got to like Bristol or like Fish Ponds, wherever it was, um, doing the casting there, like that's when I met Will and met Dakota and and all the other guys. So yeah, it was. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was that's funny. It was, it was interesting because it was just about forming the right group of people really together, as much as about like individual person who's right for the role as well if you get on all, all together and, and everything so yeah what what was it like for you though was it was it yeah. was it was that's that the kind of thing that like, i didn't realize at the time <laughs> was it was i was it just like, gonna say yeah, like it doesn't um i feel like we never really got a full group until uh well they were really struggling to cast tony so we never really got all of us together until they they kind of brought in a few potential Tonys. Um, 
And right. I just remember my first my first audition with Nick was was I think they had I think we had to snog for like three minutes. <laughs> that was the audition. What? I Quite think. Long, isn't it? Yeah, and um, it was. I think it, there's a scene in, in. I think it might be episode two, where they or might be episode one. I don't. I don't know. Are they where they have to do that, and it, I think Jal sat on the sofa just being really awkward. Um, I can't remember, but yeah, we just didn't. We had obviously we had no idea, um, what we were doing. So, really, actually, quite blissful in, by comparison. I would have thought. Yeah, well, I mean, that's quite weird, isn't it? Yeah, that's quite uh, <laughs> thrown in there. Part of my audition was like just wearing the wig, like, weirdly, I didn't know I got the audition. But, so I went for a wig fitting during like my audition process. So I was like, have I got it? What's going on? Why am I getting fitted a wig? Like, wow. the other guy that's got like really long hair, who is it? You know, and then it, you know. Maybe they wanted to just see if the visual worked. Yeah. Because it was a big part of Rich's hair. I, I mean, obviously, well, we'll get into that. Oh, oh there, are some, <laughs> there are some angry hair people. A, um, yeah. Okay, so so <laughs> Sil.Luna with four A's um, said, how did you feel when the first episode went out? Um, oh. I can't remember where I was now. I'm trying to think. No. I must. I must. I must know. I think I was. I think I watched it at home with my friends. Yeah, it was quite. I mean, Me just too. Generally... <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean like, building up. To, I mean, how was it for you? I mean, I remember sort of building up to it. It's quite like nerve wracking because like the trailer came out. Your tra your the, your guys' trailer was so cool as well. I remember that's so iconic. Like, yeah. With the um the music like was it standing in the way of control like. That's right. Yeah. So cool. Um Beth Ditto screaming her lungs out. It was just yeah. Great. But I think the build up to it being released was quite like shit, this is like real, you know, it's kind of gonna be on telly. Yeah. So, and, and also for your friends they would have known that you were gonna be in skins. So obviously at that point then they know, okay, well we're likely gonna see him talk about difficult stuff, maybe take drugs, maybe drink maybe have sex like my friends were just sat there in the first episode like oh my god yeah it must my friend so my unique. friend Paddy was sat next to my mum just like I wasn't expecting this yeah it's always weird when you're like swearing and like stuff like that yeah. with like relatives yeah you and things like that um, but, yeah. okay so so <laughs> I'm gonna like let's I've, I'm so aware that there are about a, a million questions for you the the love for you is off honestly off the chart so I just want to make sure I ask as many people's questions as possible but um <laughs> I really want to know like what happened kind of immediately after you wrapped on skins like what was the in your mind what was like the next step well it's funny because when I finished skins like I was like <laughs> because obviously looking and this sounds I don't know if this sounds really arrogant or not at the time but obviously like I've learned so much more about myself as an actor and person but I thought oh that's it I'm going to do like so well I'm going to go on just by sort of looking at you guys and like the other cast and like, I'm like I mean, and I have I've done like some really amazing projects I've been really lucky but it's been you know it's been ups and downs just as as life goes as an actor um, but um, you know I've done um like real like great bits of stuff that I'm really like proud of um but it you know I think I just thought oh, I'm gonna be like this super star person sort of thing and not that I wanted that at all really I really just wanted to be like an actor like I didn't really care about any of the stuff that went along with it at all um but yeah I don't know I, obviously I was nervous about how my performance was gonna be like uh on screen um, I'd never worked like on screen before and been like sort of theatre stuff. Thing like show, um, but you know, there's been like obviously like of any, any acting career, there's auditions you don't get, there's things you don't want, and I think like I've learnt that you're not like owed really anything. You just, you know, you you, you shouldn't have to 
expect your career to go in any sort of uh, you should just expect your career to go in any sort of direction really and, and I think really also push. when you're when you're in an ensemble it's so difficult to not compare yourself to the rest of the ensemble although you know in your mind that you're all completely different people completely different actors exactly you can't help it you come out of the show and you're like well I'm gonna I'm gonna be in the next Slumdog Millionaire <laughs> <laughs> when he does another one <laughs> Yeah, I think like, yeah, yeah, I think um, I always wanted to just do like really cool, like interesting characters. And I think leading with like Rich at the start of like my acting career was, I didn't, yeah, I, I think I've realised it's like quite a an out there kind of character. And like, it's actually what I've really wanted to do is those kind of roles. Those ones that are like, not, yeah, I've got something bit of an edge to them or something different about them so and that's what i'm just trying to do now is like trying to vary things up and do different things also okay, well, hold different... that thought hold that thought you keep okay. answering all my questions i'm like uh, I'm, I'm like 25 minutes in here it's just Come on. a big question as a okay so. okay so um uh l's m g l d this is quite a good time to ask this actually how did skins change your life oh got me drinking um no <laughs> Um, no, I don't know. Um, God, obviously it gave me the start of, a, uh, an acting career. You know, I didn't go to drama school and all those kind of like traditional routes of acting, um, uh, getting into the industry and stuff like that. Um, on a personal level, I don't know, really, I think probably gave me a bit more confidence in a way um more responsibilities and things like that but i think that's just growing up as well really it's really difficult isn't it to kind of differentiate what what's growing up and what's skins giving you a leg up yeah 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 because it was like, a, kind of like oh, yeah, was that yeah school was that skins was that like do i know about that because i experienced that as you know and, and it, when it's happening to you and you're so young I, for me, I always felt so grown up. Immediately, I was like, cool, well, I'm an adult. I'm in the working world. I've yeah. got this. I never really took like the time to be like, oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm 18, 19. Yeah. Because you don't, do you? You know, I was, I was talking to Mitch. He literally got on a bus and went to LA at 19 on his own. Like, it just spat us all out into the world. And we were like, come on, there, let's have it. And yeah, I'll tell you, we, we, then you I just have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, I realised now I was so young, you know, like, I was 17, I think, so I was sort of, I think the oldest was 18, um, mm. Leia or Sean, I can't remember, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's mad to think how young we were, and we were all quite different, and, you know, um, it did, yeah, it was like, probably some of us, the first time we'd really probably been away from home for what, you know, yeah. before, so... I think it probably really matured us in a way. Yeah, it was, I think relationships with people that I've always had like, I've got um, same sort of friends I think I had like from when I was younger, really like got a really good friend, like, you know, my best mate from school that I still see. Um, um, you know, yeah, I, I don't think on a, on a personal level it's changed too much really. I've tried to not really, um, let it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been with Rachel, my girlfriend, for like like ten years now. So when we we're doing mm. when we we're filming Skins, um, so yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, she would let you know if you turned into a wanker, right? Yeah, she does tell me. So I'm being a dick. So well, then there you go. Yeah. Look, so you need those people, those those grounding rocks in your life. And um, it's it's a testament to you that you're still bearable after ten years. I know it's still bearable. We'll see. We'll see after another ten. Excellent. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you chose you chose because it, it is a choice to remain in the business, as my intro stated. And you have had some pretty cool, in my opinion, you have achieved what you set out to achieve, which is to you know do a variety of roles. But I want to know whether i mean actually to the point where people some people were saying is it rich that he gets recognized for the most like there some of the roles that you've had 
people were questioning my introduction to you. Um, but I just want to know if that was conscious decision making, good agenting, or luck. Um, for I think probably um, I'd, I'd love to say uh, decisions on my part, but obviously I'm sure you know like you know you audition for a role and and you might you might get it and I've I've luckily got the ones you know I've got some parts that are all like sort of varied I guess in a way um yeah I've had that sort of that head on of being like wanting to do things like work in lots of different mediums like theatre as well as like being on TV and film so that's always been the thing that I've I guess consciously tried to do mm -hmm. parts wise though no I don't know um mm, no I think like yeah I've just been lucky really I think luck is, the, is so I mean, much about and, and, and a good agent as well obviously so yeah. I mean, so, those two things actually are not, uh, are, have to be, have to go hand in hand. You have to have the right person pushing you for the right stuff. But you also, you know, have to be in the country on the day they're, all, you know, all of that stuff yeah, comes exactly. into play. Um, yeah, I think, you, um, you know, you might, you might, you might find yourself in a sort of moment as well, but like, with a, with a role, you might find yourself in a time and place where you're, you feel like you can, really give yourself to that there's sort of some sort of personal thing to it you know so yeah obviously that but then there's lots of other actors who would be able to give something personal to a specific role so it's just i think luck is, is a big determining factor because mm -hmm. it's what the director or what the producer wanted you know so you totally agree what you what you do so i've got a couple mm. of questions um about your film work um one is from um, you lots of letters u h r i g x u h r i g x anyway uh what was Good it one. like working with orlando orlando scott and milo in brackets in case you didn't know that's for the outpost oh, okay yeah 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 um sounds like they know them because they're just the one first name first I know. Name. Okay. <laughs> A classic first namer. How was how was Milo? How was uh, um, yeah, Scotty. Um, they <laughs> they were. I mean, it's a really really cool film to work on. Um, yeah, I mean, God, uh, yeah, Scott Eastwood's like a you know, he's like a film really. He's like you know, he's um, <laughs> film remember, star dynasty. Yeah, and obviously so is Orlando Bloom, and so is so is Milo's part of the dynasty of sort of. Um, film stars, I guess. Um, God, I, I don't know, I could go into each of them individually, but but yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, working with all the other actors as well, because it was like half of us, well, not, I don't know about half of us, but quite a lot of us were British in the film as well, and we were playing American soldiers. Um, so many people, by the way, saying, I thought he was American. <laughs> so that's good. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Nice. Um, um, yeah, well, it, it was it was quite a, an interesting process because we the director Rod Lurie was like, um, well, when I audition, I'll start from the audition process. When I auditioned for it, the uh, met the director and I got told go in with an American accent, go in. I don't know if you ever had to audition like that. We had to go in just sort of in the accent, but no. um, go in with the accent. And I was like, no. Well, I did it and, and, and like was talking to him as well and stuff like that. He knew I was obviously British. Um, and then when, anyway, skip forward, got the part and we're filming in Bulgaria. And the first time we land, we we're going to get our heads all shaved off because we have like, you know, uh, proper army uh, haircut. And he was like, how was, how was the flight? And I was like, yeah, it was, it was all right. Yeah, it was, it was like, it was all right. It was, it was okay. Because I drive, give me 20 push ups. I don't want to hear any. Any British accents on this set? No British accents. You're going to do American accent. So I was like, okay, this is weird. <gasps> did you do 20 push ups? I did. With probably a lack of finesse. and. Uh, wow. You know, but I did a. I, hey. I did a... It's, a, it's a good it's a, that's a good lesson. You're not going to make yeah. that mistake again. No. But that was, it was actually, it was actually interesting because, yeah, we were all sort of talking to each other and. Yeah, cause it was good because it's like one less thing to worry about on set because you're always like, mm. what do I sound or, you know, so 
get into a rhythm of like the way that you speak and then you can just forget about it really yeah that is cool but, uh, yeah um I've totally gone against the question of Milo and, and Scott. And, no, that's fine. That's fine. We need to we need to keep rolling on. So you're good. You're good. I'll ask you the next question. I tried to answer. I'm sorry. You <laughs> Basically, it was good. good. It was, it was good. good. They're all good and they're brilliant. Nice. Movies. And good. it's a film. Um, yes. Yeah. Is it? Where, where can people watch it? Well, you can watch it in America at the moment. If you're American, you can watch it on Netflix, I believe. Um, yes, there are lots of Americans watching, so please go and watch it. Good. Yes, please watch it. Um, so, yeah, you can watch it on, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's on there. It might be on Amazon as well. I don't know. But in the UK, we haven't got a sort of release date yet, which okay. is, um, yeah, a shame. But, um, we'll stay tuned. We'll st might, we'll might stay be tuned. in the new year, sort of early next year. I'm going to put a, a, you know, a, a date saying early next year, but who knows, you know. Cool. We'll keep an eye out. Um <laughs> So, Sophia Ballester, how, I think it, she says, how was it like, I assume that's a translation. So what was it like working on yesterday? Yesterday? Yeah, it was um, fantastic. Yeah, it was, you know, Danny Boyle and uh, Richard Curtis, two sort of, you know, British powerhouses of, of uh, you know, British cinema. Um, Danny, yeah, both really, really just like... Um, friendly and sort of inspiring people to be around really danny ball's just like the nicest guy ever um yeah just like would love your input but also was specific about you know being direct you know what he wanted um and it was such a fantastic script as well from like richard curtis um you know i really love that character gavin because he's such like a goofball he's sort of you know lovable kind of character and um there's actually no there's actually if you if you link this in with nhc84's question which is do you prefer playing a nice person a nice character or a villain um i don't probably i try not to see people as good or good or bad um but then when i'm watching it i'm sort of scared of myself when i watch myself being bad um is that good i put well, uh, yeah, I guess so, because I've sort of done something different. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I probably, I probably um, would prefer someone with a bit of an edge because there's something to work where with and sort of uncover and try and sort of find out what that is about, you know, why is the person behaving the way they do. But, um, yeah, I don't know, I loved, I loved the energy of Gavin in, in um, yesterday because he's just... Just, he just loves music, just loves sort of, a, you know, he's a music producer, just loves music and he just like lives his life sort of, you know, in songs. So it was nice to play that, you know, and I've played yeah. a lot of sort of like moody teenage or sort of dark characters. So it was a bit of a, a change up, you know? Yeah, I think you always want something a bit different the next time, right? Like, yeah. I, I played a lot of um, horrible people and I really just want to play someone nice yeah. <laughs> um so fernanda Fer, fernanda flores 94 says yes i love him haha -ha. please ask him what kind of project is your dream job and are there any future plans of directing oh, it's quite um what was that again dream job what would be my dream job um, yeah or what kind of project is your dream job? It doesn't actually, yeah, so I guess anything. Um, God, oh, I don't know, there's no like specific characters that I've got in mind of playing, maybe like one or two, sort of like. Um... I'm gonna help you out, mine is The Crown. You'd love to work on The on the Crown? Yes. I've been watching it, have you been watching The have you I've the just movie? started, I'm episode two, so no spoilers, please. No spoilers. But, but I just love yeah. that like big, in your face, period drama massive budget mm -hmm. like everyone's everyone's fantastic like yeah. but yeah that kind of thing is probably my dream job yeah i like I, I really love the crown i think it's great like cinematically as well it's just mm, like, shot and everything like um yeah and it's interesting like, all the history of like things that you didn't so know interesting 100 percent. i'm like oh my god i didn't know that happened yeah i should yeah. know that they should teach me that in history yeah 
Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah, something like that would be amazing to work on. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to work on something like on a, on a um, really get to know a character, like in a Netflix drama or something like that, or mm. series. I don't know, really. I've got, like, I'd love to do more, like, comedy stuff. Um, I do write a bit as well, so there is that sort of directing lens. Yeah. The kind of, uh, you know, in the future. Um Nothing concrete at the moment, but yeah, I'd like to. I think I'd love to direct one day. I mean, do you, do you direct? Don't you a little bit? I haven't yet. I've, I've written. I've written and I produce. Yeah, but I've not done that last bit. That last bit. Yeah. Well, that's you know that's still quite a lot of things already. So I've got quite a few hats that I can throw into the ring. Yeah, but um, I don't know what it is about that one. I just want. A, I just want to make like the the thing I direct. It has to be a story I want to tell. I think. Mm. So, would yeah. You to, would you want to direct and write and act in like something, or do you think you just fry? I mean, I've done a lot of of. I say I've done a lot. I've I've written written, acted, and produced, and I've acted and produced, and it's I it's not fun. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like yes, it's been a relatively low budget, so there's that. I mm. guess if I was Brad Pitt and I was, you know, I had eight hundred people to like pass jobs off to, then it would be different. But I think, yeah, at the minute, at the budget level I'm kind of producing at, at the moment, all of those hats is quite tricky. Yeah. So... Was, that, was that tracks? Well, um, sorry, I know it's the US. Yes. But, but yeah, yeah. Nice research. Hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so tra uh, tracks or making tracks in the UK, um, I wrote and I was in it and mm. it was produced by... Um, and uh, Finn Bruce, who also produced another film that we did two weeks before. Um, and then last year I produced and starred in a film called The Kindred, which we're nearly finished. We're just finishing off some VFX. So it's it's been really interesting, particularly with this project, but with all of them to kind of see how, like, how business-like the other side of it is in terms yeah. of, you know, like going out and casting and being on the other side of the chair and just being like, oh, that person is just not going to bring us the amount of money we need. Or like this person and this person together might raise the budget X, Y. Like it's just that side of things that have been like, oh, is that the kind of conversations that people have about actors when we've, <laughs> when we've left the room? It's interesting, isn't it, though? Because it is like yeah. the whole side that we don't, yeah. I'd love, to, yeah. I'd love to sit on the other side of a casting sort of thing, you know. Like, mm. it's yeah, it's high. really, really interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, so well. I feel like there is there is like an overriding question that I have to ask because so many people have asked it, um, and I'm gonna try and kind of amalgamate like three three people's questions into one. But essentially, it's it's asking the same thing. So, Alice Michalko, what was it like playing such a hot headed metal kid such as Rich, and then seeing him transform and develop in season six? Do you think that he had a positive development or transition? I'm going to ask the next one as well. Okay. Uh, Natasha Zeta, how did you feel about the normalization of your character in the second season? In the first season, Rich had an uncompromising identity that he learns to be more flexible with, but still inhabits. But in the second, it feels like he got erased. The hair, the non metal music he plays in the band, it seems like a pattern of erasing the otherness of these really punk, cool, punky identities. I think she's also referring to um, Frankie. Last one, uh, ZZ Dallas. Dakota talked about how she faced difficulties with the change of her character and the direction Skins went in in the second series. And we're talking about um, five to six, obviously not one to two. Yeah. Uh, did you experience similar <laughs> difficulties? So you can see like the that that question is probably what I have been asked the most. So. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, here comes the essay, I guess. As a Off you go. Um, yeah, I thought it was um, an interesting transition, but for, his, for for Rich, you know, it was, it was um, yeah, a sort of shedding of his, you know, I guess prominent metal features, you know, the sort of the hair, the dark colours and things, um, which was... I thought interesting to play with, like as an actor, because, and it's and it's relatable. You know, you you know people who are go through a stage of like dressing in a particular way. Like I know I did, um, 
And um, it's interesting to, interesting to see. I mean, with you know, like Grace, Grace dies, you know, and there's a lot of things that happen um, to his character that make him mature and, and um, shape his perspective, you know. Um, so whether that has something to do with that, I don't know. I, I imagine so. Um, might, what I'm trying to say is that might change the way he, he comes across and appears and dresses and all of those sort of things. So yeah, I mean, getting into that was was um, w was interesting though because as, as I've already said, like you know, having the long hair and the, the physical physical element of the character was sort of like I was sort of like that was a bit of like an anchor for me as an actor, holding on to those things. So it was really about trying to discover new things. I think mm. um, not just in the physical sense, but really trying to. Um, discover his journey. And I think of... also, I mean, having having just refreshed my skin's generation three knowledge, like in the last few days, l watching the re definitely the relationship of of Rich and Grace, I can see why there is such an emotional connection with people. Like it was, it was a good relationship. They were good for each other, and then yeah. it was like ripped from under people. A bit like the kind of Jal and Chris relationship in our season. Yeah. Um, and just how, like, I, you know, I feel like maybe just to offer a, a suggestion as to why Dakota feels that the way that she does about her two series, that there felt like a, a real kind of reason for Rich in a way. And it was less about, like, an identity and more about extra life happening to him that made him yeah. adapt. And I feel yeah. like maybe that's something that people were kind of questioning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, as I said, I think he got, he, he definitely matures a lot and, and takes on more responsibility. You know, he, he focuses a lot on his schoolwork and stuff like that, you know, because he wants to do, because he knows that Grace would want him to do, to do well and do better and maybe... Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe something that, because I remember at the end of series five, it's sort of like, Grace says, like, never cut your hair. Um, and then obviously, you know, I mean, you're never going to, you know, <laughs> you're never going to have like, like that amount of hair, like in a year. <laughs> it's going to take like, that was probably like three or four years of growing your hair to have it like Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's it's interesting. I, I think I think it's great that Skins like explored that type of character. Really. Um, mm. You don't really see a lot of like I don't know. You don't I didn't really see any like kind of metalheads really on TV. You know. Yeah, and also being such a kind of centralized character and and loved by people, completely accept like accepted, obviously poked fun at, but you know, definitely part of the gang. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, um, I'm gonna because I'm I'm worried about the time and I've got two pages left. I'm just gonna throw some quick fire skins questions at you okay. because we've got to give the people what they want. All right? Yep. Yeah, we do. So try not to think about it too much. Okay. So Amima Mania, what was your favourite outfit as Rich? Um, I liked the I liked wearing the jacket that he had. The sort of black leather jacket. There's um, a Cancer Bats t shirt that I've still got. Nice. Band name. Um, okay, yeah. too long. Next one. Um, the, the, the Virgo Journal. How did you feel about Grace's sudden death? Yeah, it was brutal, wasn't it? I mean, it was, you know, as we've talked so about. So brutal. Yeah. Um, there was so much in love and it was a bit of a shock finding out as the actor like yeah oh okay you know it's just it's a skins moment somebody dies and we have to deal with the consequences now so okay fine yeah yeah it wasn't like that it was pretty it's pretty sad it was quite because it's like a it's a real person in your head really when you're filming it so yeah yeah Project. um leo cree how do you feel watching yourself on skins nowadays well, I haven't watched myself in Skins for, like, years, so I don't know. I mean... I've had to do it so much because of this bloody series. <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh, God. 
Yeah, I still uh, have to watch it. I don't know, like before I did, because then I remember everything. Um, but no, um, yeah, uh, probably not great. Probably, uh, what am I doing there? What's that? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. annoying. Why are you doing yeah. that? So, Every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, that's when you learned what a close up was. Oh, that's when you learned that you were just in the back of the shot and you didn't need to do something to pull focus. Great. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, all those that. things. That, yeah. all yeah. of those things. <laughs> uh, extra underscore Olivia, <clears throat> how did you feel about the wig? The wig, yeah, I loved it. It was a bit Great. weird, it was a bit weird at the beginning, you know, it's a bit like, oh, what's this thing that's on me? But it was sad to see it go. <laughs> it's on me, it's on me. We had two me. wigs, we had one that was just sort of for like, you know, if I was sort of falling, I was going to say falling down stairs, but I never do that in the show, I don't know why I said that. Um, if I was going to, you know, I had to sort of fall somewhere or something. Right. Um, Classic fall. One was the proper wig that um, we had. But yeah, it was sad to, to see them go. I don't know where they are now. Maybe just oh. somewhere. Oh, they, could, they could definitely sell for a lot if my last yeah. week of Instagram posts is anything to go by. Um, How about that? So, um, Mima underscore Fear, most awkward scene to film. Oh God! Um, it was a scene where I was strapped to a bus. Uh, not a bus, sorry, Aloe's van. So with just my boxer shorts on and like rope <laughs> on my hands and and legs in the middle nice. of like, Bristol somewhere. That was quite you know, cool. Quite a lot to do. So. <laughs> yeah, and I guess also again at that point people knew what you were doing. Like they they could find out it's skins filming lots of people in bristol were like oh it's just skins again there we go they've been here for five years uh, yeah. <laughs> or just a weird guy oh. doing some weird video you know great yeah fabulous um linny hc what were your thoughts of rich having the last line of the show yeah loved which it. technically it was loved, like it was it was yeah it was the last. they were gonna do another one no no but they did they did do series seven. They did. Uh, no, um, yeah, yeah. I got the last line. Fuck everyone else. Do you know what I mean? I got, I got the last one. Perfect. Um, no, it's good. It's quite, yeah. It's quite a, it's quite a. Um, I think a lot of fans quite appreciate that sort of moment. They, they like that bye sort of thing. And also, it's cool. a really nice, like, Great. full circle back to the first episode as well. Yes. Yeah, with Frankie and the eyes and stuff. Yeah. Open yeah. Line. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very, um, uh, I know I sound like a dick then, but it's, you know, I'm very humbled to have the last line. It's very, very nice. That's okay. Um, I know that you loved it, really. We can edit that um, out, because this isn't live, is it? So that's fine. No, this, this isn't live, no one saw. Um, Saoirse Jane Donnelly, if you were to be cast as a lead role in a movie about a celebrity or icon, who would you want to portray? And if a movie were to be created about you, who would you want to portray you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, really good question. I, that's yeah. why I left it till last. Sasha, well done. Yeah, nice one. I would really love to play someone like... Um, I'd love to play like a musician or someone like that. So I really like Keith Moon, who's the drummer in The Who, because he was the guy okay. who threw, threw the first kind of television out of a window in a hotel room. It's a bit nuts and a bit mad, and I think it'd be, make a really great film. So I'd love to do something like that. As for somebody playing me in a film, Dakota's just said Philip Seymour Hoffman. Does that mean that that you'd play him? Because obviously he can't play you. Uh, I know. I really, I really like. Him. Unfortunately, R.O.P. Yeah, no, I really. I think I used to bang on about Philip Seymour Hoffman a lot when I was doing. Ah. Uh. Oh, I yeah, see. I so it's a, it's, you needed to, you needed to I, be I there to know as, that. I love one. him as an actor. I think he's like, he's like my favourite. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, maybe Phil Hoffman could, I don't know, hologram a performance of me. Maybe you could play him and they could do that thing where they put his face on your face. Yeah, that's a thing now, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. I think that answers the question. That's, yeah, that does answer the question. Um, <laughs> And then the, my last thing is kind of more of a statement, really, but um, Lud Malor wants to know how you feel being an icon. 
Um, I don't know. What's that? I don't know. Well, I I don't know. I think like you know, I'm not sure whether you've tapped into this world <laughs> entirely because your Instagram posts are not frequent, but like there is a lot of there is a lot of love for you and really your nice. work and what you're doing, and it's yes. been amazing to be part of that for a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. No, um, thanks um, so much. It's um, no, I think, I think Rich was an iconic character, and so it's um, yeah, it's it's, it's lovely to be a part of that, and and to be a part of the the whole of like what Skins is. I think like Skins is such a a show that's really, I think, influenced a lot of shows now. Like I mean, you know, like Euphoria, like all of these kind of shows that. Are, um, in in the similar realm, I don't think would have been possible without skins really, and to be part yeah. of that, um, I'm really proud of, I'm really proud. So, I don't think I'm an icon. I think I'm in an iconic show, and I'm just I'm just there, just being like weird, saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Um, Alex, that is the perfect soundbite to end on, to be honest. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much for coming and being on the show and for being so generous with your answers. And, Thanks so um, much. You're welcome. Here he is, everyone. You asked for him. You've been asking for him since I started this, however many months ago it was. Here he is. You did it. So I did thank it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well thank done. You so Enjoy your whiskey and have a good rest of your week. I finished, but I think that would probably be it. Same. I'm so sad. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your book. Thanks, lovely. Speak to well. you soon. Thanks, Amy. You bro. too. Bye. 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 Oh, God. These are just good, aren't they? Love that. Oh, oh my God. My, um, my tripod is wonky today. I just find it so amazing how much I learn from the guests that I have. You know, like he, I mean, just what he was saying at the beginning about I haven't got time to say it anyway. But like, yeah, it's just great. This whole thing has been so good. And thank you so much for, for watching it. Thank you to Alex for, for stepping in and, and, and doing the show. Um, I know I thought it would be better. Like, I thought my Monday would get better. So thanks, everyone, for being here in my house and tuning in. Um, it's nearly Tuesday now, so that's good. And next week, you'll be happy if you like a little boy wizard in glasses because my guest appeared in that film franchise so i'll see you next week have a good rest of your monday or the, the whole of your monday if you're the other hemisphere and um just catch me in the dms or send me some stuff let me know what you thought um i'm gonna grab myself another drink thanks liam and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.